So do we have shares in True Tracks now? I reckon we probably <laughs> should at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michael. What are we doing today? All right, today we are back on the HQ. And what specifically are we doing the HQ? You might have guessed already by this beautiful box right here. We're gonna fix our Facebook Marketplace LSD diff. So you OG viewers would probably remember a, what, a year ago now or so, maybe a little bit more. Nathan and I attempted to put an LSD into this thing with a Facebook Marketplace diff that we found. And we spent three days and a lot of time and effort to put it in, only to find out that it was a single spinner, just like it was already in there. We did that, and then we put it on YouTube for everyone to see. But now it's time to fix that. And instead of going through the whole dramas of trying to find a secondhand diff and all that, and old LSDs which necessarily don't work all that well anymore, we thought, you know what, let's make sure that we're 100% sure this thing's gonna be an LSD. I'm gonna throw a true track into this thing. Massive overkill for this car and this amount of power, but at least we know it is an LSD and it will work. So, join us today as we have another diff experience and see if it goes out any different to the last time we tried to do this. <laughs> All right, it's a pretty simple job today, isn't it? Well, we've said that every other time and it's never gone right. We've we don't center, know. We've got two sets of bearings. Uh, we didn't know which ones were which, so we've got a set 69 and a set 47. 47, very different. Yes, very different. <laughs> and then we've just got some um, suited oil towards the, the true track. Yep, so we're going to get this thing up. Pull the drums off, pull the, the axles out, and pull the center out. Pull the center out and have a look at what we're dealing with. And with yeah. any luck, we can put all this together without any machining, minimal pressing, and shims going in that don't break. I think what we need to explain is this is not our second diff. We've done the Fairlane. No one knows. I know. The fair, we did the Fairlane diff off camera. No issues. Yep. And that car's done drag challenge, drag racing, multiple uh, street driving all the time. No issues, mate. We also did the VY diff, same install, yeah. <laughs> no issues off camera, no issues. It's every time we do go do this on camera, yeah. something goes yeah. wrong. So we've done multiple, we've done a few diffs and there's been no issues. Yes. So we know this, it's the same process. Pop the axles out, you know what I mean? Pull the center out. So hopefully this one is a smooth one for you. And there's not much on these Salisbury diffs on putting a, a true track center in it. So yeah. if you do have a QE, that, it'll be the video for you but just don't follow what we're doing. Yes, exactly just right. Just watch it and be like, cool, I'll go take that to my diff shop. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> right. Let's get cracking. Yep, let's get into it. It's been a while since we found this thing. Yeah, I know. Alrighty. How much room do we have? Oh yeah, there's plenty of room there. Maybe we'll just drop the shock it. Oh. Oh. You know how much a set of GDS wheels are worth these days? Yeah, I know. Did you try to fight? I saw them the other day. I saw a set, a nice clean set. They're like 1500 bucks minimum. You just uh, get rid of the cobwebs. She's a bit filthy at the minute. It's <laughs> run off of it. It went back on first. I know. <laughs> There we go, that was easy. <laughs> There's your single peg of life. Spins way too easy. Alright. Oh, God, it doesn't move much. It did. It's still tight. Is that the drain bung? No, it doesn't have one. Apparently not. <laughs> Damn. If it is, there's no oil in it. <laughs> Mate, I love these little pry bars. Not gonna lie. They're good. Bloody ripper. It saves your screwdrivers. Because I think I've snapped a few of the old. Yeah, all the old screwdrivers. <laughs> the old screwdrivers have snap tips. <laughs> that, that is not the color that was on the outside of the dish. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if chunks came out. <laughs> All our fails, you just... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, before we go any further, we think we should probably look at this diff to make sure that we actually have a diff or we're not missing anything or... It's just, it's just, it's just a weight in there. Yeah, we haven't ordered the right part. We just want to double check, just to be sure. It's just wheel weights. And all gorgeous. Oh. They're kind of a two-handed deal, but not if you just do this. Oh. Yeah, right. Oh, that definitely looks like it. 
Just from your eyeballs, it looks correct. Yeah. So, what we want to know is, is this bulkiness here going to hit anything? Yeah. I don't think it is. It doesn't look like it is. Like, there's no way that that, un that unit can't be any bigger. No. And the crown's all the way in there. Yeah. So, we should be clear in that. We should be right. That, they look about the same size. To be honest, that looks a bit smaller. Safe to continue. It does, actually. As you were. I don't know why it looks tough like that. Because <laughs> it looks like it's got fully soup deep dish stillies. Yeah. <laughs> Skoosh! Oh, okay. This isn't going how you thought it would, is it? No. <laughs> is there a retaining clip? I think you just got to pull hard. I've been in there a while. <laughs> Jesus. It doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. No, it doesn't, doesn't it? <laughs> Ooh, the, foot, the, foot, oh. the foot's coming off the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's not coming. Hey. Oh. Try that on the other side, eh? Just try real hard. <sighs> just pull harder. Oh, just pull harder. Yeah. Oh, look at those 28 spine axles, though. Boofy! <laughs> None of this Where's your VL now, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like I got one side, someone should do the other. No, you're really good at this. You've been working out too, you can tell. All right. Oh, beefcakes. Love it. That looks all right. Oh, should we sit the LSD on, see if it fits? Good idea. <laughs> you want to sleep our over? Yeah, because we've been caught out by this before in recent times. Oh, look at that. Like the ground. All right, good news so far. Just got to get the other side out. All right, try again. Yeah. If your first you don't succeed, try and try again. <laughs> if you're doing it three times in a row, that's the definition of insanity. <laughs> hey! Oh. Whew! That's my bearings looking. Destroyed after that. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. All right, I'll... Pop um, center out. Let's pop center out. Oh, I love that turbo turn. You're not going to So, it's painted red inside because it goes faster. Yeah, that's that's the, the go, right? I just realised though, this has Ooh. dowels on here like you, if you need to spread it. Hmm. Which is interesting because when I read the book, I did read the book this time around, it says the Salisbury's, you don't do that. Oh, okay. Hope it's not a banjo. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe that's just like an oil thing to the axles. Oil delivery system. I don't know. I don't worry about getting it out. I'm worried about putting it back in. Oh, the shims like we did last time. Yeah. Yeah, if, if we got to whack it in with a hammer, then we just stop. Well, we can spread it. Like, worst case, if we have to. I will spread it. I don't want to risk damaging the shim because we don't have any shims. <laughs> We're not checking backlash because what can we do anyway? Yeah, we can't adjust it. It's not like um, the Commodore diff where you can adjust the cones. Yeah, this would be done with shims. Yeah. And we don't have any shims. So we're just assuming that this diff is a good diff. We're just assuming it's perfect. Look. So a lot of people might be asking, why would you bother putting a true track into a Salisbury? Because Salisbury's are, well the 10 bolt Salisbury's are generally not known to take a lot of power. And if you ever watched Skiff Factory years ago when they had an LS in a HQ and then they just use standard LSDs, they broke three or four, or even, I think even more during an advert they were filming for it, they just kept breaking centers and stuff. From what I can read, when the Salisbury's are actually not a bad diff, it's just the centers are weak. So if you can fix that, which hopefully with the true track, we're gonna fix that, they should be pretty reliable and pretty strong. And considering you're only putting out 110 kilowatts in this thing, it should be very strong. <laughs> Shock loading and stuff when we're trying to burn, do burnouts. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, in theory, it, the Fairlane still has the same size axles in it. Yeah, well, true. It's more about these end caps, I reckon, like if something goes goodbye. Um, but we'll find out, I guess. That's all. That's what we're doing this for, isn't it? Oh, easy butter. Yeah. Just make sure those shims don't drop them. Yeah, that's the right hand shim. And which way is it facing? <laughs> Is there a chamfer on it? Yeah, there is. And it came out. We're recording this for our info later. It's it, it's chamfer towards. Chamfer towards. Okay. Don't. <laughs> I thought that was gonna hit. Beautiful. All right, to the bench. Ready? Yep. There we go. Easy, easy. That 
is our single spinner. This is our dual spinner. Um, hopefully they fit. So we're using, the reason why I bought two sets is because from what I could look online, I couldn't tell, no one could tell me definitely which set it was going to be. It was either going to be a 69 or a 47. And luckily we bought two because it wasn't 69, it is 47 that we're putting onto this thing. Uh, so we will press that on shortly and keep going, but we'll just return those other ones. Sometimes you're better off buying more than what you need and returning what you don't need because it would yeah. save us a trip all the way down to a bearing shop today. So. That's a win. I don't know why, but I hate pressing stuff. It always just feels sketchy, you know? It's a tight fit, look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lovely. That's on. Do the other side. And um, I always freak out when I put this on going, did I remember to put it on the right way? <laughs> All right, well, our bearings went on with no hassle, which is always good because I hate it when it becomes a hassle when you're trying to push bearings and stuff like that. Bearings are usually pretty good, it's usually bushes. Bushes can be a prick. Anyway, so they're on. They seem to fit, they seem to be the same size as the old ones. These are the old ones here. They're a bit narrow actually, but... Dude, we're not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough to near enough, and near enough is good enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now we're gonna take crown wheel off, slap crown wheel on, slap back in. Yep, and the good thing is, that's where this baby comes into play. People ask why we have a big vice. This is why. All right. I hate this bit. Go for it. I hate this bit. <laughs> I'm gonna use a breaker. No, it is left hand thread, but let's just see. Which means. Righty tidy. Righty, righty, righty loosey. Righty to loosen it. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. We'll be right. Here we go. Turning? Yeah. Uh, that's tightening it. You no. just snapped it. No, it didn't. It doesn't feel good though. Oh no, that's all right. No, it did snap. Why did that snap? Are you sure it's left-hand thread? I read in the book. It says all all of them are left-hand thread. <sighs> Every time. Every time we do this. Every time. It's a normal bolt. So we should be taking it off normally, so it should be falling backwards. Just going anti-clockwise, like a normal. Yep. <laughs> Never trust the book. Never trust the book. The book said <laughs> left hand threads. These aren't left hand threads. These are normal threads. We should have used the breaker bar. <laughs> That's annoying. It's not the first time we've done this. <laughs> so, um, this feels familiar. Boltsman back, Boltsman back. Oh, like a glove. I guess now we go get a bolt. Go get a bolt. All right. Slight detour. RIP left hand thread that wasn't left hand thread bolt. Well, we're at the factory. We're going to try raid my old diff. But while we're here, we thought we might stop in and have a look at what's going on with the Cortina. Yes. So Les, the owner, has been hard at work making more room for tires. And it looks great. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So it is now tubbed to the rail. As I guess you would say, yeah, tub to the rail. So he's made a new inner wheel arch, he's squared it all off and just gone straight to the rail. This is the old arch. It's funny, like when you think of mini tub, when you look at how much room you actually gain just by squaring it off and moving it yeah. over. What, you probably moved over 10, 15 I think, mil? I think it's gained 30 mil. Yeah. I think it's, it's, gained, it's gained 30 mil. 30, 30 mil. mil, yeah. So it now can squeeze a 255 tire in there nicely. Yeah. So we're still gonna roll the lip. 
um, but it can fit a 255 really good. So it means we can squat the ass down a little bit more with a 255. So it's going to look mint. So things are happening on this car in the background. Yeah, it's awesome. Shit, Gem Gemini happening. too. Gemini as well. Yeah, shit's happening. Yeah. It's happening. It's only the start of the year. All right, let's go find a diff, shall we? Yeah, let's go find a diff. All right, up into the mezzanine. It's hot up here. Heavy really. This is not where we plan on being today, but it's also not the first time we've been here doing this. In fact, this diff right here is missing one. This right here is the graveyard of or broken bolts. Can you get to it? Yeah, uh, yeah, I can, right? Two out? Nah. You confident, are you? Yeah. Mate, it can't be out easy. Slap her back together, it's let's go. It's locked in there tight now. All right, well, we're gonna lock this back up now, pretend it never happened. Probably label these to say that they're missing one bolt so we don't sell them by accident and then realize, oh, put that on the wrong way, yeah. haven't I, yeah. And then we're gonna scoot back home and get back to work. Let's do it. All right, well, we are back in the air conditioned goodness again because it's hot outside today. And we've got our bolt back in, so yep. now we have a matching set. Yes. And now we're gonna talk it up. Do you know what torque we're gonna go to? Yep, 40 foot pounds, uh, 40 to 50 foot pounds, so Where? I went in the middle. Where'd you find that? In the book. You found it already? Yeah. Wow, he's all over it. And then the bearing caps are 50 to 60 foot pounds. Okay. So I'll set that up for that now. How good is it having that big vice? It's, it's good. <laughs> That's good to go. Cool. Let's throw it in. This is the bit I don't like the most, but anyway. <laughs> now, don't hit it with a hammer this time. Let's see if we can get a shim in. Oh. I've got the center. You've got the center? Yeah, I've got the center. If you want to line everything up and tell me where to move. No, it's, it's not going, going in square. square. Square it up. Hang on, let me take it out. Reassess. All right. We're taking a brief intermission to think about if what we're about to do is a good idea or not. And the reason being is because we're thinking we might have to spread this diff, which is something we've done before, but every bio of the book it says we don't need to spread this diff. But we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> so what we've done is made up a homemade jig. Well, this is the jig we used for the Fairlane. Yeah. So this is the same jig we set up for the Fairlane. You can see we've got our two dowels that yep. have gone into the axle tube ends. And then we've set up a a spring compressor backwards, so then it pushes out. And then we spread the housing. So we've just done the same thing. We've just flipped it so the lug is out so we can reuse this for other diffs. Yeah. And we've just drilled two holes into the housing and we're gonna try and spread it. We're gonna see what happens. We don't think we need much, but we're just gonna see what happens. And if it doesn't work, then yep. come That's up with a new plan. Good. But it's scary. Cause now we don't, we're, we're venturing into the unknown here. Let's do it. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like it. Working? Yeah. I think. Feel looser? That's going in easier. It does feel slightly looser, yeah. Okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's why. That's why it's tight. That should fall in then. Hopefully. No, hang on. I can't even get the shim. I wonder whether we put a couple more turns into That's it. That's what I'm thinking. Do you want me to turn it? Yeah. More? Yeah. I think it's starting to bend. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's bending there. Yeah, we're coming in now. I think you've got to whack it now. Oh, it's hard to watch. I really don't like this. Nah. If we commit any more, there's no getting it out. That's what I'm thinking. Hold on the whole thing, ready? Yep. Oh, yeah, there we go. Got it? Yeah, got it. Ow. Take that. All right, that's not gonna work, so we're gonna have to reassess. Bear with us. All right, well, this is a familiar feeling. We're admitting defeat once again on a diff. Now, I promise you that other diffs that we've done off camera have always just <laughs> slipped in, they've fallen in and worked. But whenever we try to do it on camera, we seem to have issues and we can't complete it. So the issue is obviously the old center just fell right out, which is what we made us think, oh, we can just drop the new one back in, it should be fine, because by rights, these should be pretty much the exact same width. But obviously with the new bearings and everything, and they're just that little bit tight, like, and it doesn't want to fall into place. Um, we had it just then with a spreader, trying to spread the casing, and where it's recommended with a book that you don't spread these things, you shouldn't have to, they should just fall in, and it wouldn't work. We couldn't get it in. 
the risk is we don't want to try and get this in and damage the shim because they're pretty rare apparently and hard to come by and chances are we need a different kind of shim so what we're going to do is do like we've done every other time this has happened we've called up Carl's Diffs and Martin and we're going to pull this diff out the whole thing and send him the diff and say can you fix it and then bring it back throw it back in and hopefully have a working diff because we're starting to realize that maybe diffs are a diff shop thing. That's why they're <laughs> dedicated diff shops. And we should probably leave it to the professionals when it comes to this because we just don't have any luck with them. So, again, sorry you guys don't get to see it go in. But if you want to know what happens, basically you just put it in with the right shim and then we just assemble it all and do yeah. the reverse. We could reverse the video, put it all in reverse, <laughs> and that's what it looks like. Yeah. Why don't we have any luck with this? You're a funny guy. Yes, I like. It lifts like under my Yeah, it'll lift three times. It's right or two less, but. Might need to walk it out. Okay? Might need to walk the dog! Walk it All right, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna take the diff down to Carl. <laughs> Knock on his door and be like, Carl, yeah. it's us again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it's gonna be. Why is it gonna be me? <laughs> uh, so I'll do that. He can fix it right. Diffs are a whole, you know, different game. Different game in themselves. They require specialty tools, and we don't have those specialty tools. So yeah. maybe we need to stop trying to do them ourselves and hand them to people because it just is better and easier. I think so. And I don't know if we mentioned before too, we did look at this this morning. This does have a front pinion seal leak. Yeah, it's pissing out. And if we're going to give it to Carl, we might as well say, can you do that as well too? Because yeah. it's only going to leak further and we don't want to touch pinions because obviously then we got to worry about meshing. If someone else is doing it for us, so then they can get it right and we might as well get that fixed. So Yeah, so it's going to come back better. Better than ever. Yes. <sighs> All right, until we get it back, hopefully soon, and then go from there. Yeah. All right, Nathan, it is a couple of weeks later now, <laughs> but we're here. What do we got? All right, we've got a fully built diff now from, from Carl's Diffs. He put the center in for us and refreshed all the bearings. So it now has a new pinion bearing, axle bearings. The axle bearings were the factory axle bearings. Yeah, apparently which are like cast and everything. So all in all, it's probably not a bad result because now it's a fully built, rebuilt diff. So yes. there should be no issues with this whatsoever, hopefully. So she's all ready to go, but the spicy meatball topping <laughs> has been finished by a set of yeah. Nankangs on some steelies. Some 15 by 7 steelies, and then we've got some 235 Nankangs on it. The boys at Tire Power, uh, Tire Power Mountain um, got the rims and, and fitted the tires for us. Yeah, big thank you to Adam for helping me out sourcing these things. Obviously, we couldn't measure offsets or anything because I had no diff. So ah, It looks like they'll be fine. They look, it's gonna look so I know, they look pretty cool. <laughs> so, um, we need to smash the diff back in, get the wheels on, go for a drive, make sure she's hunky-dory, and then we've got hard-ass 1000 in a week's time. Yeah, like just a little bit over the week and we are still nowhere near prepared to go. Oh man, how many times have we done this, Michael? <laughs> Did I miss her? Where are we staying in our rock out here? That's too bad. Oh, fully, where are you going? There's no singles. There's no singles here. Singles? There's no singles. Except for that one, and that one, and the other cars at the front. Take it straight out. Get it out and break the car. All right, diff is in, it's all sorted. We still got to bleed the brakes, but we can't help ourselves. We need to see what these sticky boys look like. You ready? On the old HQ, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, she's. They're not Holy gonna fit. Holy shit. That's not gonna fit. You're gonna have to get a guard roller, boy. It is rolled. No, I think that'll be fine. I don't know about that, Nathan. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Dude, you're only going down straight. Like, that's it. You're not towing a trailer. Till I hit a bump. Goo -goo. There goes the guard. God, it looks big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks sick. I right, do. Let's, let's bleed the brakes. I want to get it down. Mm -hmm. I, I think it might be right. I think we might need to just massage that tail end there. I'm not massaging anything on this car. No way. What I don't do want to crack the paint. They're barely rolled. Like, that needs more rolling there. That's not happening. There and there. All right, they're wide, so <laughs> we're going to have to see how they go. But first things first, let's bleed the brakes, get that done. And then we can see if we can bolt them on and go from there. And hopefully they fit because these are big boys. Well, the offset, they probably could have been positive offset a little bit more and bring them in. Yeah. All right, brakes are good. They're bled up real easy. One thing we're going to check now is we're going to check to make sure there's oil in it. Carl did say he put oil in it, but just to check it, make sure that it's the right level. We're also going to check the transmission level as well too while we're here because, well, that hasn't been checked for a fair while. Yeah, she's good. She's full? Oh, it's thick. She's tripping out top, that's good. Look at that. Alright, now we find out if Michael's going to cry or not. Because uh, we don't have time to swap these wheels out beforehand. <laughs> Big Damn, they look good. Looks good with black steelies. Man, imagine this with black steelies and tire lettering. Yeah, Give it that NASCAR cool. look all around. Can you do the tire lettering for me and this? Fill it in. Look, it's made for it. <laughs> it really is. Everyone be silent so we can hear the rubbing of the guards. Nah, it'll be fine. That's the spring setting. Oh, mate, you could put a bloody semi truck in there. You're joking me. <laughs> oh, actually, what did I tell you? Worried about nothing. That's heaps of room. How does that work? Because I swear this tucks tire. Stress Ed Michael over here. Oh, you were the same. Nah, Don't pretend mate. like you were. I was just trying to scare you. That's nothing. Damn, it looks freaking sick though. It clears, doesn't it, Michael? It does. There's heaps of room. I was worried about nothing. but I had a heart monitor on him. It was at like 250. Oh, it's, it's only because like, I know like changing rims is not the biggest deal, but when you're a week out and these took two weeks to get because they had to come from Perth, I was a little stressed. So let's... Um, Break a bar up. Break a bar arm, take it for a test. Take it for a test drive and see if she's not like wah, 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 yeah. wah, wah, which she shouldn't be. But yeah. anyway, I know it's only a two three five, but it just looks good. Hasn't ran for a while, so let's see what happens. It does. It looks really good. I actually really like it. Suits the black stripe. All right, well, we're gonna let it warm up for a bit, move all the cars around and go for a quick spin. Just make sure everything's good and clearancing is fine. I can see right now, I don't think there's gonna be any clearancing issues. That they should be fine. But yeah, see how it goes, bring it back, wrap this up. Unfortunately, we're not gonna see its first burnout until we go to the uh -huh. hard ass 1000. So we're gonna have to wait until then to find out whether it's gonna true track is gonna do what true track should do. But I mean, we've ran true tracks in the fair lane now the VK, the BY. BY, and they all do exactly what they should do, so we're not worried. We, it, it should be fine. So let's move some cars around and go for a spin. Let's do it. test drive and I can tell you it's all smiles. <laughs> yeah, she feels great. The diff is dead silent. There's no issues there whatsoever. It feels really awesome on the road. We wore the stickers off. Um, we thought we'd give it a, a go at maybe a couple of hard launches out in the back roads up there and she gripped up really, really well. So it's like, da, 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 and just it just bogged down straight away. So like, oh, okay, it's bogging a little bit. We weren't gonna do it, but maybe we'll try launch it off the two-step, and we did, uh, and it just spun the wheels, didn't it, until yeah. it gripped up and then and took off. So I was pretty amazed that it, it spun those wheels, to be honest, because like they are fairly big sticky boys for this little tiny engine. Remember, we're only making 110 kilowatts out of this thing. So yeah, I'm so bloody keen to see how it goes on the track now. I'm oh, 
Nathan's just giggling the whole time. <laughs> so if you've liked this episode, and I hope you have, consider liking and subscribing. It really goes a long way to supporting the channel. And if you want to support the channel even more, head on over to the website where you could become a member and help us out. And you could also get yourself some merch and stickers and thread testers. There's still thread testers available. And come along to the Hard Ass 1000 to see this thing because by the time this video is released, I reckon we should be there next week. We'll be getting ready to leave on the Sunday. So come along, say hello. It's going to be an awesome week. Really can't wait for this event, especially seeing this thing is ready to go now. And the Fairlane, Nathan just needs to do a couple of things, but it's ready to go. Fairlane's always ready to go. Oh, on that note too, becoming a member. So we mentioned last week that Joey Evans, one of our Hack Shop Garage members, won this toolkit. And I reached out to him and said, mate, congratulations, you've won this toolkit. And he was stoked. He was really happy. But he also informed me that literally... The weekend before, he went and bought himself a monster toolbox, very similar to like the one we have over there. So he's like, I don't really need them. Could you pass this on to some young fellow who's setting up his tools and be put to better use there? So, in return for that, I said, you know what, mate, you're a legend. And we really support that. I'm going to send him a Hack Shop Garage thread tester as a thank you in, in return for that. But, now we need to give this away. So we're going to open up to any of our young viewers out there, comment in the comment below. Tell us what you're working on and tell us what you would use this on and out of all that group we'll pick someone at random or someone we think worthy of this thing and we'll send it out to you as a thank you to just all support you guys give us uh, on the on the weekly. So if anyone watching knows someone that would put this to good use, let us know that as well too and you know we'll pick someone at random and send this out because these are awesome, really good to keep in the car and for you know someone starting their first tool set. I mean my first tool set that I ever bought Go on, get your yellow Stanley. With my little yellow Stanley <laughs> toolkit. I mean, this is the tool set that I started with when I started, you know, messing around with cars and it's still going strong, kind of. Um, Blue is this, better now, but... And this is a way better kit than that ever was, so... You know, this is a great start for any young kid that, uh, you know, is playing around the shed, so... Let us know. Tell us someone we can send this to. Anyway, until we see you in the next episode, we're at the Hard Ass 1000. Get excited, people, because we are. Hopefully see you there. Uh, yeah, we can do the one thing that we don't have. I, I do give, give. One thing we do give is the uh, diff gasket. I didn't get a diff gasket. Hey! Oh, well, you win something with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a heavy <bad> hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <laughs> oompa loompa oompa dee doo. I've got a diff with an LSD too. <laughs> Michael's gonna be doing one of these. What are you gonna do? You gotta hold three grand and you just you should dump it. Do <laughs> <laughs> you come with any instructions this time? No, nah, they never do. Good luck. They always assume that you're a pro. Well, I mean, look at you, mate. You got the gloves on, you got the gear, nah, you buddy. know? Good, buddy. Oh, oh. What? Spiders, mate. What do you mean, spiders? Hidden, not driven, you know? It's getting the spiders. Not sure. Welcome to Melbourne summer! <laughs> Look at that! We are all over for five to two minutes! Well done, Bodie! <laughs> this is gonna cost me too. Yep. I'm never gonna financially recover from this. <laughs> Cause I have $30,000 in credit card debt! <laughs>